Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're joined by Becky Gardy, Bloomers Water Garden Expert. We're going to talk about winterizing your pond or water garden. Becky will continue with us as we discuss winter rose care. As the weather turns colder, our feathered friends need a little help from us. So stay tuned. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Fall is for planting. Bloomers Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass, and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomers Nursery and let one of Bloomers Nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomers has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. On today's show, we have Becky Darty, Bloomers Water Garden Expert. Welcome, Becky. Thank you for coming today with us. Thank we you for having you. me again. Yes, yes. Uh, today, we're going to have a little segment on water quality during the winter time. Absolutely. There's tons to understand and know that while your pond is sleeping, mm-hmm. it's still working. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, I mean... Nitrogen is constantly building up in your pond. It happens from breakdown of waste, leaves. Wow. Pretty much anything that goes in the water is going to start that cycle. Even when the water's cold? Yes. Oh. Um, this is about the time that we like to move over, always using a beneficial bacteria, but a beneficial bacteria that is geared to live in cool water. What is a beneficial bacteria? That is a microorganism that slowly eats the nitrogen, the buildup at the bottom throughout the water okay. while it's in there. So it's something you have to artificially introduce to the pond. Is it in the water or in the filter? or It's did... both. Okay. So you add it in, and then it'll start to actually cling to your filtration systems and stuff like that as you go through. Um, I think we've talked about it before. It's an ecosystem, but it's a false ecosystem that we've created that we have to now maintain. The circle of life. Exactly. Um, One of the best things I always recommend to the customers that come in to see us at Bloomers is uh, uh, Microbe Lift Autumn Prep. Uh So it is geared to be in the pond at 40 degrees. Oh, okay. Um, Now, now what is it? So if you have, all right, I'm a typical homeowner. I take care i feed my fish when it's fun and i i try to clean it up as best i can but i still have like sludge at the bottom right will it do anything for that yes um basically it's going to quietly eat while your pond's sleeping like i said before it's going to break it down okay um will it get rid of it 100 percent? 
No, but it'll get rid of it so it actually doesn't build up and start poisoning the water against your fish. Okay. Um, and this is all during the winter? This is all during the winter. So We have the frozen tundra. Right. Ugh. If it okay. freezes, as soon as it thaws, that bacteria will actually thaw back out and start working again. Okay. Um, when these gases break down, I'm sorry, these organisms break down, they produce a gas. There is a heater you can add, and people always think, oh, I don't want to turn my pond into a hot tub. No, no, yeah, no, no, that's the no. first thing I thought, hot tub. <laughs> right. We're not working a hot tub. It puts off just enough heat to create a circle in the top of your pond so that the gases can then escape. Some owners say, oh, I'm just going to bang the hole in it. <laughs> okay, well, imagine what that sounds like to the fish and the shock you put them through while they're sleeping. I mean, basically, you've got hibernating bears in there <laughs> that are resting that you're going to bang a hole into. So I always tell people, pick an aerator or pick a heater. I like to combo up with both. Really? The reason is, is I shut my system down. So no filter. Can you leave your filter on? I always recommend no, only because everything's made out of plastic. So I told people, okay. bring in the pumps, bring in anything you can, your filter, pressure flows, all those things, right. store them. Let the heater run to keep the opening. Right. Let the aerator be there for the oxygen. So what if I put my pond and I don't have, how, how do I pull out? Do I cut my line or should I put in like a T-valve? You can put in a T-valve, disconnect. a union, all that stuff. Um, okay. Some people just disconnect it and leave it open. Um, the same thing goes for the UV systems. I always tell people, yeah, pull the system UV out. Yeah, because they have out. glass tubes, glass light bulbs. If yeah. any water's around them, they're going to crack and they're going to break and it's going to be expensive. And again, the transformers wow. might end up getting wet and there goes the whole system. Yeah, because UVs are really a warm water uh, protection against algae. Oh, right? that's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, to change the light bulbs in the spring, but basically get everything out of the pond that you can, net the whole thing down. Right. That way no leaves, the less you put in it, the best you can have for the pond in the spring. So when I put a net over it, mm -hmm. like am I still gonna, how do I, what do I do? I mean, is that gonna be, do I anchor it all around or do I just throw it over and let it float on top? Oh, I like to anchor the thing down. You gotta think the weight of the snow is gonna come on it. The weight of the yeah. leaves are gonna come on it. It's gonna pull in. You have that thing pull in, everything's pulling in with it yeah, and breaking down. Yeah, pool cover looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so I recommend putting the net on now. Even though the pond might not be closed, the leaves are falling. It's fall. Yeah. Um, and remember, everything that goes in, it has to go somewhere. So the less you put in there, the better off you're going to be in the long run. I always talk about how a pond is a septic tank. Mm-hmm. My favorite. Yeah. You know, it, it, it has that rotting debris in the bottom, but it's the filter that makes it safe for the fish to be able to swim around and not get poisoned by that rotting debris. Yeah. That's but the thing. But it has to be... It has to be seeded with the bacteria that we were talking about mm -hmm. in the beginning. So it's really... A, it's three things so bacteria for cool season correct right and a heater correct which creates like it's like the vent or the chimney yes. for the fireplace so you don't want to you know you don't want to smoke out your whole house so you put a chimney in and it goes out the top right all right and then the other thing is making sure it's covered yes Yes, please, the covering. When, like, as soon as you see your first leaves fall, you put a cover over it? Honestly, me? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. the kind of person yeah. where, I mean, even with my pool, I look at my husband, I'm like, listen, it's time. I don't want to <laughs> clean this thing I, in the spring. I want to open it and be perfect. What should somebody do a pond cleaning now or, yeah. or not? And, and should they clean their filter pads and do all that at this time of the year? You can go either way. Uh, we just recently cleaned a customer's pond. Mm -hmm. She's going to open up, and that pond's going to be perfect. She'll be ready to go, wow. feet on the ground in the spring. Right. Mm -hmm. Then there's some people who want a fresh, nice start in the spring. Either way is good with me. Filter pads, I usually, because I shut the system down, take the filters out, clean them, make sure they're in good shape. Then I store them for the next year. But again, when you do that, that bacteria is probably not going to be there when you open up in the spring. So you kind of have to kickstart it again come springtime. Right. Now, you mentioned UV cleaning. Now, a UV is basically a glass quartz sleeve, mm -hmm. 
and a bulb. And right. what happens is that you, that ultraviolet bulb is inside the quartz sleeve and the water passes over the quartz sleeve. Yes. Now that needs to be cleaned yes. and removed because mm-hmm. it can't freeze. No, it cannot. And as best as everybody tries, water eventually gets in and is going to be around that. And you really don't want anything cracking that glass. Those quartz sleeves and light bulbs are very expensive. Yes. And light bulbs should be replaced every year in right. the spring. Come see me. Let's get new ones in. Right. Because what happens is we do get people saying, oh, I have a UV. It doesn't work. And then you ask when their bulb was replaced. It's like, you have to replace the bulb? Yep. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The thing is, you also need to replace the seals on it because you get water in there. Now you lost the transformer. Mm-hmm. So the whole system shot. Right. So it's not mm-hmm. just seals. Yeah, light bulbs. It seals and everything, too. Okay. All right. It sounds like a lot of work, but overall, I think it's, a, you know, you can get it done in a, in a weekend, a weekend day, mostly. We had the customers done in less than six hours. That's okay. with a full cleaning. That's not just a shutdown. That's the cleaning and shutdown. Right. And the cleaning is when you jump, jump all the water, get all the water out, gather up the fish, mm-hmm. power wash everything. Yeah. Shop back the whole nine yards. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So. Good information. Good information. Thank you. All right. We're going to be back right after this break, and we're going to talk about the fish and the plants that are in your pond and what to do with them during the winter. We'll be back right after this. Are you tired of mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonod has the answer. Mouse magic. Mouse Magic is an all-natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse Magic has a pleasant aroma, which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works as an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room, and you are mouse-free for up to two months. Available in a four-pack box or a 12-pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonide products are family made in America. Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Limerick Hardware Company, Limerick, PA. Dublin Agway, Dublin, PA. Primex Garden Center, Glenside, PA. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, we are back in the garden. The water garden. (laughs) Thank you, Dottie. All right. So what do you do with your fish and your plants in the wintertime? Let's go ahead and go over plants first. All right. So we'll start from the outside and work in. Good idea. All right. So your first grouping of plants is your marginal plants. That's everything around the edging of the pond. Okay. What's um, the type of, give me an example of a marginal plant. You could use sedum, um, grasses. Um, Pickerel rush. There you go. Right, pickerel rush and cattails. Cattails. Yeah. Okay, so so all that stuff that you see like in the wild, that that right, that th- the edge of the pond. Okay, exactly the so, very edge along the margin. So <laughs> I get it. Marginal plants. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Julio. There you, go. you know, it's funny. I always it? think I'm like, oh my god, is it on the outside or is it on the inside? I'm like, no, no, no. It's kind of both. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's kind of that both yeah. up down. I mean, it's got to be wet. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's be, right. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. Um, all right. So what I do with those is I cut everybody back. Okay. Pull away all the dead from around it. Um, once again, the less you have break down the pond, the happier the pond is. That's right. Because those leaves that you're pulling out actually become deadly bacteria mm -hmm. in the summertime. Correct. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now those plants that are tropical, there's always been a discussion. What do we do with these? Can I put them inside? Throw um, them out. Correct. <laughs> Don't try the basement, the garage. They never come back. <laughs> Cut them loose. You're done. A next fun one right. will be there next spring, summer for you to fill them back up. Right. Actually, you know, I want to say anybody out there who wants to try it, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then when they're a mushy mess, you can say, hey, you know what? Those guys on the radio are right. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it, it, if you have the time and inclination, go ahead and try it. But right. like Becky said... Yeah, Oof. just kind of cut them loose. Um, Euthanize them. Another big one, people. Well, I left my water hyacinths, my water oh. lettuce in. You want to talk about sludge oh. that comes to the bottom of your oh. pond? That is a slime <laughs> fall. We oh. are due. Our first frost is within the next three weeks or so. Uh huh. The first frost. They are the first <laughs> to go because I have lived that where yeah. you have this great cover. You don't have much algae because you have a nice cover of floaters. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. And then overnight yeah. you come out and it's all dead oh. brown and started to break down. Down. Right, it's yeah. it's frothy. It, it it almost looks like you know a, uh, a cappuccino or, or a frappe <laughs> from uh, from a coffee house. I think the best thing, if you haven't gotten them out now, do it. Yeah, today, yeah. even if they're alive. Wow. Yes, please don't wait for that death match. It's just it's gone. <laughs> yeah, timing. You don't have to be perfect with timing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we sound like you know. We see dead people. We want to kill people's plants all the time. <laughs> it sounds like it, doesn't it? It's like, throw away your tropicals, oh, throw yeah. away your floaters. Yeah. But it is, it's I time. Mean, it's your annuals in your pond. You only get one season out of yeah, Right. Yeah, you don't get much. Right. And yeah. they're cheap. Yeah, they cheap. are. They're cheap, yeah. like three for five bucks or something yeah. like that. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, to me, they they're like accessories. Like <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Now, your hardy ones. Those are your fun ones. Oh, yes. Pull them all up. All right. Now, hardy ones, you said cannas, right? Can't, some cannas are hardy. Some cannas are oh, tropicals. Okay. It depends right. on how you take care of them. Read those tags. Right. Read those tags. Um, lotuses, lilies. Oh, okay. Now, some those, of the grasses. Like, I always wonder, well, lotus mm -hmm. actually pushes its leaves above the water. Same so with I lilies. So I never know. Like, you know but lilies, they, water, they float on the water, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But their roots are rest down. on the bottom. Yes. Okay. So what I tell everybody, pull up the pots. Bring everybody back up to you. It's time to make sure your pots are intact because um, you do not want them breaking through your pots and mm -hmm. rooting into the liners. Okay. Um, feed them. Should you, should you repot right. them? Yes. If the pots are not intact anymore, it's time to repot. If they're getting too fat for that pot, right. time to repot them. Give them room to grow. Okay. Um, if you can't get to it in the fall, do it in the spring. Just make a point of getting it done. So if you're doing this work, no matter when you're, you should repot them, except mm -hmm. I wouldn't repot them during the summer when they're actively growing. Oh, no. Only spring, fall for these ones. Yeah. So, so and that, again, lotus... Are hardy or not hardy? They are hardy. Now, we have a pretty wide range. I mean, we go all the way to, you know, like, say, Allentown. I, you know, you're right. I mean, so the zone further five. up north. Right. So we're hitting zone five as well. Mm -hmm. So it's borderline. It is. It's a 50-50 on that one. I take that back. The cost of a lotus, leave them in the pond and... and Try it out. Try it. Yeah. I had a lotus come back for me year after year after year, mm -hmm. and then it just got hit by too much shade, and that ended up killing it. I find that the best thing to do for that one is drop it to the deepest part of your pond. That'll help it hopefully winter over better. Do you have to drag it back out? Yep. Okay. So I, twice a year I tell people, pull the pots. Now I have heard about your waders. <laughs> Tell yes. us about your waders. <laughs> My husband laughs at me every time I put them on, but basically it's a full body suit, Ooh. boots and everything. And I will. I will wade right into the ponds. So and like Duck Dynasty hip is. waders, <laughs> like, you know. I, I kind of look silly, but the thing is, That's is great. I don't like getting wet and I don't want the 
We'll call it cooties that are in the pond. <laughs> that's a technical term. Oh, boy. That's an old I term. Don't want to Listen, a couple of ponds. We've actually seen leeches in people's ponds. Yes. yes. So I'm a little careful when I go into my pond. But, um, I don't blame you. Yeah. However you want to get that pot, whether wade in, pull it in with a stick, go for grabbers, whatever you got. Get that pot towards you. Get the stuff cut out. Shove in the fertilizer tabs. And then sink them all back to the deepest part of your pond. Okay. All right. It's a good idea to get waders. You're a whole lot more inclined to go clean up your pond if you have them Mm -hmm. as opposed to deciding, do I want to get all wet and like Mm -hmm. have maybe like something brush against me that I don't know what it is? It still kind of happens. (laughs) I actually got into someone's pond recently and I'm not going to lie. It came up to my armpits and I thought, oh God, the waders, they're not going to cut it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh, that's a deep pond. Yeah, and I kept thinking, oh, how much deeper? <laughs> I was in luck. I was about ready to have a fish in my suit, but we, we did good. That's great. That's great. I, it's funny because I always think, you know, when it when you have that drop off and when you build a pond, you have a, a ledge for, for marginals and mm-hmm. then you go deeper and then you have always uh, the deepest section. Yes. Fish can hide and things like that, but, mm-hmm. but it's slippery. Uh, so you fall on... I have fallen into the pond more than anybody can count. You've got to have good balance. And what's always great is it happens at work, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to bring the extra clothes. It's like, what's that smell? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'll tell you, it, it, with making sure that, that you get those into the deeper part of your pond will ensure that they'll come back because there is insulation mm-hmm. that way. Um Repotting them, I think, is a great idea. If anytime you're touching your plants and mm-hmm. cutting them back, repot them. Yep. Because they'll do that much better the following year because they're not going to put on, they're going to put on some root growth and they're going to anchor in. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of things people don't think about. They're going to throw dirt in the pot. Do not no, put dirt in your no, pot. No, no. Come see me. Come get planting media. It's kind of like a pellety right. rock. Right. Um, right. That is what we use for the ponds to. Not introduced. It's dirt. aquatic plant soil. Most any garden centers that have a pond department will have it. Um, obviously, you can come to Bloomers or go to your local uh, garden center. Um, right. I'll say it. Don't go to Home Depot or Lowe's. They're going to look at you funny. I've never even seen it there. To be yeah, honest that, with you, I mean, it's they're, they're not going to know they're what you're there. talking. They'll yeah. they'll give you like water softener pellets. Um, <laughs> now, what about fish? Okay, fish are important. Um, they're your baby bears. <laughs> they have to hibernate. So at this point in time, if you haven't done it, it's time to start. We move over to a spring autumn food. And the reason there's a difference is it's high in wheat germ. Okay. Wheat germ is what fattens those fish up because you're not going to feed them after the water reaches 50, I think. Right. Because at that point, their metabolisms come to a steeping, slow crawl. Right. They will no longer eat. And they, they start will... living off of those fat reserves, right? Right. So that's why you fatten them up. Same food you use in the spring because you're going to refatten them after the long winter. Right. So don't worry if you have that fall food left over. Yep. Um, and it's water temperature, so 50 degrees. Mm-hmm. And 50 degrees is when you stop. And start, I think. Okay. So, so again, it's water temperature, not ambient temperatures, not air temperature. No. So you're using that weep germ formula, and, and you'll see it. It'll be labeled for spring and fall mm-hmm. on, on the label. And it should say, no matter what brand you buy, it'll have wheat germ highlighted. That's like their big product line. Right. Okay. Wow. Lots, <laughs> lots to digest. Lots <laughs> right to in digest. The, Literally. Between fish and bacteria. <laughs> um, all right. We've got a segment coming up about what to do with winter rose care. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I can't all wait right. to hear. We'll be right back right after this. Fertilum Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilum Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilum peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. 
Gasper's Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, we are back, folks, and we are back in the garden as opposed to the water garden. (laughs) And We're drying off? Yes, we are drying off. (laughs) We're going to talk a little bit about roses at this time and what's uh, how to take care of them at this time of year. Do you have roses, Julio? No, but I'm going to buy some. Oh, you say that every time. You I don't know. have some. <laughs> I have some. You have roses? I but do. do you have real roses or do you have like uh, no. knockout roses? I got roses? the cheap, I got the knockoff ones, literally knockoffs. Not knockoff. Not <laughs> knockout <laughs> roses, hey, right? My grandmother was a rose grower, so I know really? how difficult it can be. It can be, but, yeah. you know, in the modern age of horticulture, mm-hmm. it's become much, easier. much easier. Oh, yeah. Much easier compared to, gosh, could you imagine doing it like in the 50s? Listen, she would say the black spot, like the black plague is when she talked about it yeah. it's true mm-hmm. it's true so you have knockout roses yes, i'm guessing knockout right roses. knockout roses which knockout roses for this conversation let's consider them a shrub and they're not really yeah. part of this conversation they're they're I'm very out. carefree they're not they don't need to be sprayed you know if you see something on them and then sometimes we'll get uh a little bit. they'll get something but not not like a hybrid tea yeah, or yeah. florabunda oh, or grandiflora so it's getting to winter time mm-hmm. to to go and prune or not to prune that is a question um it's really better uh do you guys take vitamins of course yes. uh-huh. right now right. i remember you was rose hips vitamins was all the rage at one time you want your roses to form rose hips not because you're going to eat them right but because it it signals them to go dormant oh Right. Did not know that. Yeah, there you go. And so you, you leave that. So you don't prune them down. You, but what you want to be aware of, it's not so much the cold that's going to bother them. We'll get back to that in a second. But it's the wind that does more damage. So you want to make sure that they're secure and protected, that, that there's not going to be something that is blowing it back and forth to wiggle it out of the ground. And the chances are that has would have happened already. There would have been signs of that. But if there's anything that uh, is going to be causing damage, like crossing branches right. where they're rubbing back rubbing, and forth, yeah. you want to cr- cut out the the weaker branch. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to do that. Right. Um, also, you want to stop feeding at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't want you to stop spraying. I have a question. Yes. What exactly does a rose hip look like on the plant? It uh, looks like a little knob on the top, like a little round ball yeah. okay. on the top. And that the different varieties will look slightly different. Mm-hmm. Like some plants, they're really big and prominent. Others, they're smaller. But it basically is what's left over from the flower. Okay. And after that flower is, is done yeah. blooming, it forms a rose hip. Okay. And that it ripens. And it will turn most of the time like a red, red. color. Yeah, it's really pretty. It is. Oh, yeah. It looks like a berry. I actually have it seen does. that. Yeah, it, yes. does. It, yeah. does. it does. It does look like yeah. a berry. It does. Uh, a berry or like a miniature apple. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, now uh, I was about to go on a tangent about... Roses and apple related <laughs> families, but we're not going there. Okay. That's <laughs> another show. <laughs> but what I want you to do is make sure you're spraying your dormant oil spray mm-hmm. until the the weather has been so that we had enough frost that you're oh, yeah. pretty much done with leaves. 
uh, when the leaves are, are done um, or when you pretty much are basically tired of taking care of them and it's too cold for you to go outside, you want to spray them with a dormant oil spray. Mm-hmm. Now, dormant oil spray, uh, Bonite has the all-season spray. Right. It's a paraffin oil. It's all mineral, mineral oil, basically, mineral. all organic. Mm-hmm. And the way that it works is it will smother the insect, the egg, okay. the nymph. It gets rid of everybody. Everything. And it's huh. a light oil. Now, Becky, and you you run the perennial department too. Yes, yes. And you can spray it on perennials, mm-hmm. and it also will control powdery mildew. Ooh, which I have a problem with in my own house. Yeah, this time of the oh, year, it's it's very it's prevalent. Yeah. Very prevalent. Yeah, my peony's been acting up. Oh boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, when we talked about cold, we were talking about graft. Uh, I wanted to talk about grafting. Mm-hmm. Some of our listening area is zone five. Uh, which is pretty cold, you can protect that graft by creating a little cradle where you can fill it with oak leaves. Okay. That will create an insulation around that graft because you don't want to end up finding in the spring where the root is alive and the top graft is dead. So Why oak leaves? uh, Because they don't break down as fast. They're not going to rot and they're not going to transfer any of that to the, the rows. There's also uh, rose collars that are available for purchase. There's, they also have these, uh, they almost look like little, uh, like balloons, like a balloon animals around okay. that go around the base of it. Like a gator bag almost. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Okay. Kind of, sort of. Um, goes in the same spot. Uh, and you guys ever grow climbing roses? Oh, my girlfriend has. <laughs> yeah. I want to, there's, uh, we were talking about movies this morning on the way in, and uh, there's, uh, I think it's Father of the Bride. Oh, I, oh, I love that house. And that house has a rose, climbing rose bush. Yeah. All right, we're off on a tangent. Anyway, <laughs> um, but the thing with, with that is you want to make sure that those canes are tied. They're not going to flap in the winter wind. Um, secure them and don't tie with wire. Do not tie with wire. What is the best thing to tie with? Twine. Nope. There's a little Next. plastic. The little plastic, uh, little plastic zip, zip ties? ties. Zip ties. Nope. Oh. Twist ties. Nope. They have wire in them. Stockings. Stockings. Oh, that's even better. Take stockings, <laughs> nice and soft. It's not going to cut into the uh, uh, to the canes. Bad. Like lady stockings. Lady stockings. Really? That's right. Oh, I got to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll help you with that. Yeah, there you Thank go. you. <laughs> <laughs> Put it this way: buy the cheapest ones you can find, okay. and, you, <laughs> and then when they say, and the, they may look at you funny when you oh, say that I you're know. using them to tie something up. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've seen better. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen. If you have questions about your roses, give us a call Thank on you. the hotline or text us. Send us pictures. We can take pictures on, on the hotline, and, and that's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. And if you have a complaint, email to Julio Zamora. That's right. I'm ready Careful for you. boomers in the garden. <laughs> All right. And our next segment coming up, we're going to be talking about our feathered friends. Yes. Birds. Fighting. Yeah. We'll be right, right back. <laughs> bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Are you tired of mice moving into your home with you every fall? Would you like to keep them from coming into your home? Do you dislike using mouse killers around your kids and pets? Bonod has the answer, Mouse Magic. Mouse Magic is an all-natural mouse repellent that keeps mice from coming into your home, summer cabins, cars, boats, RVs, farm equipment, garden sheds, and more. Mouse Magic has a pleasant aroma, which smells like spearmint and peppermint, but mice hate it. Mouse Magic repels by smell and works as an irritant that drives mice away. Just use one throw pack per average size room and you are mouse free for up to two months. Available in a four pack box or a 12 pack economy Ziploc bag. Bonide products are family made in America. Mouse Magic can be found at these fine stores. Spots Hardware, Medford, New Jersey. Haynes Farm and Garden, Cinnamons in New Jersey. Rourke's Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. 
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. All right, we are back in the garden. All right, so I asked you guys about roses. Kind of let me down. Bird feeders, anyone? Bird feeders, beard feeders? Julio, bird feeder? That. And you also mentioned when we were talking about ponds during the break mm-hmm. that you have what's more of a water feature for your birds. That's right. Okay. It's so it, it's time to – birds are – they're migratory, yes, first right. of all. And and I want to just quick add because it's – people don't take your hummingbirds down – or your hummingbird feeders down just yet. You do have migratory hummingbirds and maybe a few stragglers around that are right. that are making it across to warmer weather right. or warmer. Let's see, they all go to South America. So anyway, keep your keep them out. Mm-hmm. Once we get a freeze, not a frost, mm-hmm. then bring it, in. bring it in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's good. Okay, got that. Beautiful. Out. So Julio, you have uh, a feeder. Yes, I do. Do you concentrate on one specific food, or you just give it a blend? Uh, I, I mix, I'll go back and forth. Oh yeah. Okay. So not, you don't, it's not like a peanut split feeder. No. Okay. No. All right. No, I like to mix it up a little bit. You know, anybody who's out there that has kids, um, in November, it starts, uh, let's see the second Saturday in November oh, and wow. it's called the feeder watch. Feeder watch. Oh, wow. It's uh it's a, it's a program. It's been running for a few years. Oh, uh, nice. it is, oh. it is something that you can do with your kids. Uh, any teachers that are listening, this is something that you can do with your students. And it's uh, the uh, Cornell Ornithology Lab uh, is involved with this. And what you do, it's very simple. And, and I know that I made it too hard on myself. I, I was looking at it and I was <laughs> like, oh, I got to sit there and I got to name these oh, birds God. and everything else. <laughs> but it's really, you kind of just hang by the feeder and. You uh-huh. give a count and you say, oh, I had four of this. And, and then that. you start learning what the birds are. Right. Okay. And then you report them to the feeder watch. Now, what uh, are they looking for exactly? They're trying to see how migratory patterns are changing. Okay. Um, like one of the spots that I was reading about there said that the northern cardinal is actually expanding its range. Okay. Um, which, you know, around here, cardinals are like... You know, all over. they're all they're they're all over. They're like <laughs> yeah. the predominant. They are. Every, everybody's excited when yeah. they see a card. Oh yeah, I know I am. Yeah. Um, and that it just it just is something that you count and you're you're giving this information so that they can get everyone's information to see the health right. of the songbirds and you know you're you're not like necessarily doing. You know, unless you have geese coming to your feeder, you're not like counting right. geese, but you know, chickadees and and all right. of the. I probably have a lot of pigeons at my house. Well, <laughs> but pigeons know. will will only feed off of the ground. So get your feet yeah. off the ground. Yeah, not your feet, your feed. The problem is all the <laughs> the birds scoop it out for them. Uh, we are going to talk about that in this next segment. So, Len, up. this information is going to scientists, right? Correct. Okay. Correct, and you're a part of it. Oh, okay. You are a part of it, wow. and and it's not. They make it nice and easy, so that it's, it's not hard to understand. Um, and so yeah, you don't have to do this every day, right? No, oh, no, okay. no, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Better. <laughs> um, it it uh, let's see. As they describe it, let me mm-hmm. just see if I can hear you. Your bird counts help you to keep track of what's happening in your own backyard and help scientists to track long term oh. trends 
and bird distribution and abundance. Oh, wow. So they're using basically a community to help them gather data. Yep. And and this is how wow. simple it is. You, you can count birds as often as every week oh, okay. or as infrequent as you like. Oh, that's great. And it's completely flexible. I like that. And like with me, I like rules, so I wanted to know. It's like <laughs> yeah, you have right. to do it every Thursday every... between 7 <laughs> o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> yeah. and you can't go past 2.30. Okay. No, it, it is just it is so flexible. It, oh, it sometimes... Great. Gets it, you know, makes you confused, but right. you get a kit that's oh. involved. You get a bird feeder. Yeah. You get a, a bird um, identification chart. Thank God and, on that. Yeah, and if you want to want to check it out, uh, you go to their website, which is feederwatch.org. Oh wow, that's easy. That is not, that's super yep. easy. And again, you, the there is so much information there. Yeah. Um, I, I suggest everybody go there, even 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 if you don't want to commit to it. But mm-hmm. just take a look. There's information that wow. you can you can certainly grab from there. That's great news. Yeah. One like thing that. one thing that I like to do uh-huh. at this this time of the year right. is, is that I want everybody to go out, get their feeder, bring right. it inside, mm-hmm. empty the seed out, and give it a good Clean. scrubbing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. A lot of the pathogens are being spread by uh, birds yeah. and wear rubber gloves yep. uh, and you want to scrub it you can use something as mild as like a dawn dishwashing detergent mm-hmm. but you want to make sure that you get the tube mm-hmm. that's that's obvious but you want to get the ports to where the birds feed birds from feed. Oh, okay good because you may have like i have a feeder uh-huh. um it's my favorite feeder and, and it actually never seemed to be running out of food and that's because it was dirty, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the the actual port was clogged. Oh, okay, boy. so I was like, "Wow, they're not eating from <laughs> that feeder." And it didn't have anything to do with the feeder; it had everything to do with the laziness of me not cleaning it. Right, it happens. Well, it you does. work so hard. It does. I mean, that's it a does. problem. Oh, <laughs> Quit sucking up. Um, so anyway, uh, make sure that you clean your feeder. Right. Make sure it's dry before okay. you refill it because right. that will clog stuff clog too because the seed is dry sure. and then when you put it in, it expands and it gets wet. And Not good. Yeah, I'm sure it gets moldy and mildew. Yeah, right. So clean your feeder. Clean it. Yeah. Important. Right. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah. very much. Now we're, we're going to come back and then in the next segment, uh, okay. we're going to continue our talk about birding. Oh, good. Um, but again, it's, we're going to talk about bird food. Oh, okay. uh, bird food, bird okay. seed, good. however you want to call it. Right. You got to get the right one. That's right. All right. We'll be right back right after this. Does your garden have planting insurance? It can now with Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma. It's the ultimate starter plant food. The secret is a special blend of natural organic plant food, beneficial microbes, and mycorrhizal fungi. The result? Plants grow faster, roots grow deeper, flowers and vegetables flourish. Best of all, every Espoma product is safe for people, pets, and the planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Biotone Starter Plus from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Fall is for planting. Bloomer's Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomer's has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. 
If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are back, folks. And we are going to talk about uh, birds. Choose a bird seed. Price is not ever the right way. That's right. That's right. Um, so fillers. You, mm-hmm. We were talking about things like uh, that, where Milo birds generally don't eat, and and birds are looking for almost like the fish. They're looking for something that's high in protein. Right. That they're looking for something that's going to fill their belly and and build up their fat reserves. Right. Um, for me, it would be cheese steaks. <laughs> for for a steak period for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for the birds, they they're looking for something high in protein. A lot of the mixes, and I got a mix at a supply place just to use it, just to check it out because I couldn't believe how cheap they were selling it, and they were a competitor. And I won't say their name, uh-huh. but it, they have tractor in it. Wow, oh. they're. Seed had so much Milo and so much. Oh, it's just it, it, fillers. <laughs> and what happens when you get a a cheaper seed? Like you go to a, a box club store and you see, wow, it's fifty pounds for ten bucks or right. whatever. I really don't. Yeah. What's in it uh, is a lot of that filler, because the expensive stuff is the sunflower and the expensive stuff is safflower, and a lot of, of the uh, high. Uh. Okay. And and what okay. what ends up happening is that something that you said Becky during the break is that your bird seed ends up on the ground. Yes. It does. And it's the Milo that the birds kick out on the ground cuz they don't eat it. They're getting they're trying to get to <laughs> the sunflower, to the sunflower the seed. Yeah, yeah exactly. The good stuff, right? That's right. You know, don't give me vegetables, give <laughs> me the cheese That's steak. That's right. I like that one. You know, so I understand now. Yeah, and and that right. uh, like I personally will feed um, mostly it's all Sun uh, sunflower meats, okay, yeah. and that's whole sunflower. Whole sunflower yeah. So it, if it's so no shell, no so shell sunflower all. without the uh, shell. Yeah, that's. I'm going to your place. <laughs> You're going to my place. Come <laughs> on, come to my <laughs> feeder. That's, that's, there. that's right. Uh, but the the beauty about that is that uh-huh. the the amount of space that that takes up in my feeder, because they eat all of it, uh-huh. I actually am saving money. Good because point. they're not digging through and throwing it all on the ground. Because then you start having it's wondering about doves. And uh-huh. then you have chipmunks, chipmunks. and mice. mice. Now it's time, field uh-huh. mice. We have said over and over and over on this program about making sure that you're getting ready for the onslaught, the invasion uh-huh. coming. of rodents, rodents yeah. coming into coming. your house. And it's mostly field mice. They're just looking for a place to, to winter up. over. They can't yeah. make it to Florida, so they're coming to your house. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> So uh, the thing is getting a better bird seed will make sure that your, all your seed is being eaten by birds and not getting kicked out and becoming rat food. Oof. Okay. So, Good. and again, that makes it even worse. Squirrel problems. Squirrels come in. Uh-huh. Then all of a sudden, rather than being on the ground, they're on your feeder and yeah. they're uh-huh. being acrobats and they're fun the first time to watch, but then they start getting annoying because they're eating all the bird food. That's right. So huh. what you want to do is get a good, good seed. Again, Independent Garden Center is a great place to start. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary. Go see Shirley. She will direct you. And there are some seeds I I want you to know about that certain, like the like grackles um, and... Blackbirds, right? Uh, well, I, I what I wanted to get at is squirrels. Squirrels. They don't like... Birds do not have saliva glands. I found this out they by can't, Shirley. They can't spit. <laughs> okay? Right. But that also means that they, they don't, don't taste. really taste. Mm-hmm. How they know the difference between Milo and Sunflower, I don't know. You can ask Feel. Shirley at Bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that they won't eat safflower. Like squirrels don't like safflower. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's different types of safflower. Like, for instance, there's a white safflower, which it, it looks about the same size as, as a sunflower seed. Okay. And that it, does. it has a, a white hull. And, and mm-hmm. when it hits the ground, it's pretty obvious. Right. But now we've been pushing the Nutrisaf, Nutra. which is a brown hull, has the same uh-huh. qualities of regular safflower, 
but it's brown. And it, to me, the best part of it is not only that it repels or, or squirrels don't like it, but the fact that you can't, it's not as, Visible? Ugly on the ground. It, it mixes better with your mulch. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. So uh, consider getting uh, Nutra Saf or it's the it's the brown, brown colored saff flower. Okay. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Now, Julio, you said you just mix up what what you feed. You have do you have one feeder? I have one feeder. Yes. One feeder. Oh, I, even though I do have a suet. Okay. Do you do you put it? Did you? Oh yeah, I love suet. Yeah, yeah suet is woodpeckers great. Come in, yeah, I love them. Right, there's the little cute downy woodpeckers, which yeah, are small, so cute. Yeah. and then there's the the big ones that look like kind of like woody woodpecker. All right, yeah, <laughs> woody woodpecker. perfect. And but they they're around. They come. Yeah, they're around. They come. Oh, they yeah. love it. And even people in the city in yeah. in Philadelphia they can do that. Yes. Like I'm trying to encourage my daughter yeah, again, Melissa. You were probably mentioned every week on this show. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> that, popular. Yeah, that uh, I want her to start feeding the birds because she's surrounded by trees, trees and it's yeah, she has trees. Yeah, yeah. That, that's wonderful. And that yeah. she's not yeah. going to get pigeons because she's yeah. going to feed the right seed. Right. She's not going to feed the the Milo oh. and the cheap seed. Oh, I, look, I found a deal on bird seed. <laughs> no. All right, I'm a changed woman. I'm going. There you go. Oh, find you go. better seed, yeah. better seed, better seed, and put out not only a regular um, feeder, but do a, a suet. suet too. Yeah, I do both. I'm actually yeah. going to oh, try yeah. the suet. Yep. Yeah. All right, Julio, I, what bottle am I holding up in my hand? Bonard, uh, chipmunk, squirrel, and rodent repellent. That can be sprayed right on your feeder. You Thank go. goodness. So this is a repellent that it won't repel the birds, and you can spray it all around your oh, feeder, yes. mm-hmm. and it will repel them. And it's all organic. It's not going to hurt the birds. It's right. cedar wood, castor oil, clove oil. Oh. This is the one that I was saying it smelled like salad dressing oh, yeah. or it smelled like pumpkin pie <laughs> pumpkin because pie. of the clove oil. <laughs> but cool. uh, it it does a great job, and, great and job. it's something if you're, like, overrun oh. with squirrels, yeah. if you use that. And, again, you're modifying behavior. You're not – it's not that you're just going to put that down. It's going to magically change things. Right. You have to make the squirrels associate associate with going to your feeder with that there smell. You go. Look okay. All great, right. Great product. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to wow. add on birds? Oh, Listen, boy. I'm learning. Yeah? More yeah. than anything, I'm learning. Bird, mm-hmm. Birds are fun. I, oh, yeah. I, I actually – our phones are so many tools. I, I have a porch where I sit and I play the songs of certain birds and uh-huh. it's so funny to watch the reaction of the birds at my feeder. Like they're looking around. It's like, Hey, who's calling for a date? I'm ready. You know, they're looking around. Anyway, everybody I encourage you to go out and get a feeder you if go. you haven't done it. It, it is uh, a, it is a lot of fun. It and, is. A lot and of fun. it's, it's our, and you learn and they are our outdoor pets where you don't really have to clean after them. There you, like that. That too. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're going to be right back right after this. Fall is for planting. Bloomer's Blend Township Turf Grass Seed is perfect for your lawn, no matter if you have sun or part shade. Township Turf germinates quickly in less than 10 days and provides a dark green, fine-bladed, durable turf. Township Turf is a blend of the best ryegrass, tall fescues, and bluegrass and looks so good many people think it's sod. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. See me in Julio down by the schoolyard. 
<laughs> we are back. Yes, yes, I was telling Julio about being frustrated with a squirrel, and I threw my coffee at it. <laughs> and I was so mad because it was eating our bags of bird oh, food. Goodness. Anyway, it was outside, Grant. Uh, it wasn't inside yeah, the store. Thank goodness. It was the only thing I had in my hand. And, oh, brother. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Well, yeah, so so much to learn, so much to do. Oh, Every so season much. brings something new. Yes, Ooh, does. that rhymed. Yes, it does. <laughs> that's already good. I didn't even plan oh, that. You're a poet. Huh? Didn't know it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Becky, if you had to tell somebody one thing to about their water garden, what they should do, what would it be? Uh, start your shutdown. The season's over. We enjoyed it. Yeah, now it's time to let it sleep and enjoy the inside. Let it go. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Let it go. Yep. All right. All right. Good job. Julia, what, what did you learn today? Oh, I learned today a lot about the water garden, you know, how to keep that water clean, crystal, crystal clear, and yeah. uh, you know, adding a microbe lift. You right. need to do that. Right, getting mm-hmm. getting those plants yes. mm-hmm. repotted now, now so that it's so much easier in the spring. Right. Because almost spring, it's, sometimes it's too late. Oh, yeah. Late. You, I don't know if it's too late, but it's look, more you, of a pain in the neck. You have so much to do. That's right. So one less yeah. thing is on the... Yeah. Good side for me. There That's right. And, and one thing that I'm going to do is not throw my coffee at the squirrel. I'm <laughs> going to be right. spraying the chipmunk squirrel and rodent repellent from, from Bonide. That, uh, that'll, work. Get, that'll teach that that'll, squirrel. That's right. It'll repel it. <laughs> and I'm going to make it mad by putting in uh, uh, the, the safflower. So I'm going to feed him safflower. Here, you here's something bitter. Two ways of repellent uh, and safflower. Well, look, out. look out, squirrel. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Brett. Brett. Producer extraordinaire, thank you, Brett. And we'll see you in the garden next week. See you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.